We are defining given uh, indices for vector bundles. Before doing that, uh, we would like to. I would like to recall in the first or zeroth section uh, the Clifford index for line bundles. Some of you are specialists in that, so but 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 maybe others are not. So I'll recall this. So. C is a small of genus G greater or equal to four, actually, for two n genus two and three, the Clifford index doesn't make really very sense as we define it, but so we assume greater or equal to four. Over an algebraically closed field. And for simplicity now. I assume that the characteristic is zero. I mean, most of the things work also in arbitrary characteristic, but then what, what is the classical Clifford theorem? It says the following. If L is a line bundle, <coughs> of degree of positive degree, of non-negative degree, D greater or equal to zero, and a special line bundle meaning that H1 of L is positive, then <coughs> there is a following estimate for H0. This is lesser equal to D over 2 plus 1. And it says a little bit more even with equality, if and only if, <coughs> if, and only if L is trivial, all the canonical, oh, I write x, sometimes I write x and sometimes I write c, sorry. Uh, the trivial bundle, the canonical bundle, all the curve is hyperelliptic. Elliptic and L is the power of the hyperelliptic line bundle. Some power of the hyperelliptic line bundle, right? This is a line bundle giving the two to one covering onto the projected line. This is the Clifford theorem as it is, for example, in Hartshorn's book. This suggests already that for special curves or for general, for, for, for a given curve, in fact, the uh, uh, estimate here is much better, right? And this is, in fact, the case. And the Clifford index measures how much better it, the, 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 uh, this inequality is. So let me define it. Definition is <coughs> gamma one. One for line bundles. Later we will have gamma n for vector bundles of n. n. Gamma one of C is defined to be this is double point defined to be the minimum over all line bundles L of the number degree L minus two times h zero of L minus one where the minimum is to be taken over all line bundles such that H0 of L is greater or equal to 2 and H1 of L is greater or equal to 2. <coughs> right? By Serre duality, one can also define this as the minimum in the same way of the same number here with H0 of L greater or equal to 2. But instead of that, just because uh, by cell reality, we could assume the degree of L is equal to G minus 1. These two definitions are immediately equivalent by cell reality. Okay? So, uh, yeah. And then, if we have this, actually, well, I should say, why H of L greater or equal to 2 here? Greater or equal to 2. Why not greater or equal to 1? Because if we wrote here greater or equal to 1, then uh, on every curve there is a line bundle with, uh, equal, uh, with H0 of L. For every degree there is a line bundle with H0 of L equal to, to 1, I mean, in, in this range, right? So these, uh, then the Clifford index wouldn't 
distinguish the different curves. So there would be no, uh, no, uh, no invariant for a special curve, right? So that's why. And moreover, uh, so using this, what does the uh, difference theorem improve to? If we use this, we have actually that <coughs> d over 2 plus 1 minus gamma 1 over 2. So the uh, inequality is in essentially better, right? And then, of course, the question is, for any curve satisfying this, this inequality instead of this theorem, which is, in fact, much better, as we shall see, for, for, for general curves, right? So, uh, <coughs> yeah. Uh, before I write uh, down uh, the invariance for, uh, for some <coughs> what, which values uh, it can take, two more definitions. One says that <coughs> L line bundle contributes to the Clifford index if and only if these uh, assumptions are satisfied. H0 of L greater or equal to 2 and H1 of L greater or equal to 2. Right? And one says that L computes the Clifford index, computes gamma 1, if and only if it contributes in addition, if in addition, Uh, gamma 1 takes the minimum here, so if it computes it, right? Gamma 1 is equal to uh, degree L minus 2 times H0 of L minus 1. Okay? These are the definitions which you also later on, the same will valid, be valid for, for vector bundles and I will, won't repeat it. Okay, then uh, Clifford's theorem says exactly that gamma 1 is equal to 0 if and only if C is hyperlinked. This is just Clifford's theorem. Actually, the, uh, the addition here, I mean, not the whole theorem, but I mean, this statement here. Uh, where is it? Clifford theorem. Here with equality. This says just yeah. And what is the well, gamma one equal to one? This is the case if and only if C is trigonal or a plane quintic. Smooth plane quintic. I mean I don't write smooth quintic. And gamma one is equal to two if and only if C is quadrigonal. Not a plane quintic because a plane quintic also is quadrigonal, but I don't write this. Not a plane quintic uh, or a plane sextic. Gamma, gamma 1 equal to 3, we get another type of curve already. So this is here C is quint, or how do you say? A 5 gonal, maybe also I should say 4 gonal instead of quadrigonal. Uh, five gonal, not a plane sextic, etc. I mean, that I don't write here, right? Or plane septic, or there's another type, complete intersection, complete intersection, is means of two surfaces of degree three, of type three, three in P3. So this is a new type of curves. And this goes on this side, so let me write here gamma 1 equals n, if and only if one can show that c is n plus 2 gonal, not n plus, not a plane something, I mean, right? I mean, I could uh, define here n gonal as a curve such that <coughs> there is a, a, a linear system of this type computing the Clifford index, then one has the right notion here, but uh, okay. Or a plane, uh, or a plane, 
Then curve of degree n plus 4, or plane curve of degree n plus 4, right? Or so called curve which is exceptional, or exceptional. And this means, i.e., or one can define as the following, and gamma 1 is computed by L of degree, degree 2n plus 3 with h0 of L equal to n plus 5 over 2. And not computed by a uh, line bundle with smaller h0, right? These curves are not completely classified. I mean, there is a, a, a sort of classification. Some we, we know some properties of this in the joint paper. We, we did this with the joint paper with David Eisenbart and Gary Martins and uh, Frank Olaf Schreier. But the, co the, 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 uh, the classification is not complete. Uh, we show that there are families of every degree of this type uh, on a K3 surface, which is with, with pika number 2. So they exist always, we give families. And uh, for, low, uh, for low genus, uh, we also uh, say these are all of show that these are all of them, but then we cannot show that they are all of them varieties. So <coughs> There might be, they, they have all these properties, I mean, we work out some properties, but we do not know whether there are really all of them. Uh, there might be different ones, so they are not classified. The classification is not complete. And then uh, one goes on, finally, with the, uh, as I bring it, theory. theory gives, gives that if C is general, in the sense of Brill Ritter, whatever this means, then, then this means that gamma 1 is equal to g minus 1 over 2, the biggest integer, lesser equal to. So in general, this means in general, the Clifford index is big. So in general, uh, the, this inequality is much lesser <coughs> uh, than uh, for special curves. Right? The general condition is equivalent to the Sorry? Petri condition. Yeah, uh, if it's Petri, also we have this, right? Petri curves are general, so if it's a Petri curve, we have also this. <coughs> okay, this is the whole theory for, for, for the Clifford index of line bundles. Now we are going to define Clifford index for vector bundles. So what's the idea behind this? Uh, the idea is to want an invariant which is distinguishes curves, right, more than the genus. And this is the first invariant is the Clifford index. And the idea behind uh, studying this for vector bundles is we want to distinguish curves more, find more invariants which, which distinguish curves. The th the, our results are by far from, from being complete. I mean, this is just the beginning, but I mean, the. Probably the idea behind is that uh, in distinguishing, in, in classifying the curves, uh, syzygies come in also. Not only, I mean, here no syzygies come in for gamma 1, but for higher genus properties, syzygies come in. <coughs> okay, so now different index, the definition, what did I write? Definition of gamma n and gamma n prime. Sorry? The, the reference of the last theorem, gamma 1 is equal to you mean this one? Yeah. yeah, that's a joint. What do you mean? This is the exception. The, the if and only. Here? Yeah. Yeah, this is in a, pa a joint paper with David Eisenbach and uh, Martins and Schreier yeah. and myself. I, mean, I don't know when, 1995, 18 or 1998 or 7 or something like that. 96 or something like that. So, but I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't know any other paper of that. Um, it's incomplete, and but nobody looked at it again. <laughs> so, 
Okay. <coughs> so now, now suppose E is a vector bundle of rank N and degree D on C. Again, we denote by mu of E the slope, which is D over N. It's called the slope of E. Of e. Then we define for this vector bundle the following invariant, similar to uh, that one here. No, not that one, but so this is for 1 over n, d minus 2 times h0 of e minus n. Okay? For line bundle, this is exactly this number. Right? If n is 1, we have exactly this number, which comes into the minimum. Okay? The mu of e. It's convenient to define this for every vector, uh, for every vector bundle. And then the, we define the Clifford index, gamma n. Well, now there are two Clifford indices. Gamma n and gamma n prime. Gamma n we define by minimum over all vector bundles with the following properties, I would say. Of this number, I write it here like that. I mean, this would be gamma of L here. Okay. Minimum over all those, which, well, now we take, we have to take, uh, as I explained yesterday already, not every vector bundle, but we choose semi stable vector bundles. I will say in a moment, semi-stable of rank n <coughs> with h0 of n of 0 of e greater equal to n plus 1 and h1 of e greater equal to n plus 1. That's the first one. Notice that with n is e if n is equal to 2, we get the old definition. Right. Actually, I would like to take the other. I would like to take this definition, it's more convenient here. So lesser. So this means just the slope, mu of E is lesser equal to G minus 1. So I have to take this definition. Okay, so n plus 1 is a generalization. For n equal to 1, you have just 2 here. I will say in a moment why semi-stable and also why this. Uh, and then all we have gamma n prime is the minimum over all E. Same here gamma of E, but now E again semi-stable of rank N. H0 of N, the difference now is greater equal to 2N. And mu of E, mu of E lesser equal to G minus 1. Okay? Yeah, why these two now? Well, first of all, yeah, I mean N plus, for N equal to 1, we have n plus 1 is 2, and for n equal to 1, 2n is also 2. So both of them are generalizations of, uh, of, of this here, right? One could, one might say, one might also say, why not taking h1, h0 of L greater equal to 2, because this is also a generalization. Because, uh, because same reason as before, uh, then they would not distinguish, maybe I write this, they would not distinguish the curve. So, maybe I write this down. Uh, <coughs> so there's always, exists always an E with, of with, uh, well, with mu of E less or equal to G minus 1 and uh, H0 of E greater or equal to k if k is lesser or equal to g, lesser or equal to n. On any curve, right? One can show that it exists. So if you would write here some, some invariant which is le less than, lesser or equal to n, then you would, on any curve you have, would, the minimum would be uh, the same, right? So be because it always exists. So the, these are not, uh, this is the same as uh, the reason as before, right? So this is, uh, well. So that's why we use, uh, could not, for example, take n equal to 2 for higher rank, right? But this makes most sense, so maybe I uh, erase this again. Then another question is, why semi-stable? Why semi-stable? One could also use stable vector bundles, 
Yeah, one should also, <laughs> but this would probably give uh, different uh, Clifford indices, right? This has not been done. We could also consider here the Clifford indices for stable bundles, or for indecomposable bundles, or uh, or for uh, look at. I mean, there there are some results also on this. Or you could also uh, consider vector bundles with a given uh, uh, stability degree. There are also results on this. I mean, there are several uh, possibilities here. We chose here semi-stable because they are semi-stable bundles are behave better under specializations. <coughs> so this is sort of the first uh, <coughs> investigation. I think this uh, should go further, and we uh, certainly we also Peter and I would uh, will work more on it. <coughs> okay, this is the definition. So let me write down some elementary properties. Properties. Maybe I own it then. Because of time I <laughs> Okay. <coughs> then in the next section. <coughs> I will explain Mercas conjecture. <coughs> so <coughs> there is already a Clifford theorem for vector bundle. I mean, the analog of Clifford theorem for vector bundle, for vector bundle, for vector bundle, is uh, was uh, is in a paper of Rambilla, Pass, uh, Grigorchik, and Eustace, and the proof is due to Tian who did not write it up, but who proved it, but they, they attribute the proof to Tian. This was in 95, I guess. And the, I mean, the proof is very easy, actually, just by, by uh, uh, induction. So it's not very easy. E semi-stable of rank n. Zero less or equal to mu of E less or equal to G minus one, then H zero of E is less or equal to D over two plus N. So for N equal one, you get the old uh, Clifford theorem. And for N for <coughs> bigger N, the theorem is a bit, bit. <coughs> Again, one can also write that, uh, uh, work out that the equality is strict for hyperliptic and direct sums of, of line bundles, etc. I don't do this, right? Okay. Then using, I mean, again, using uh, the definitions of Clifford index, you, we get, so using gamma n and gamma n prime or gamma n prime, we get h0 of uh, e is lesser equal to d over 2 <coughs> plus n minus n over 2 gamma n, respectively here gamma n prime. Minus n over 2 gamma n prime, if uh, e satisfies these properties here. Okay. So uh, with these invariants again, the estimate for h0 is much better than than uh, in the general Clifford theorem. And uh, there was a conjecture of uh, Merka for the, I mean, one al already tried to, to give an estimate here of H0. And Merka had the following conjectures. Maybe I write them down here. Uh, yeah. So the conjectures of Merka say if E is semi-stable of rank n, zero lesser equal to mu of E <coughs> lesser equal to 2g minus 2. <coughs> I mean again, as I explained yesterday, 2g minus 2 for semi semi-stable. This range is the important range because uh, if the uh, slope is bigger than this. Riemann Roch gives you H0 in any case because H1 vanishes. If it's smaller, then H0 vanishes and there's nothing to do. And moreover, one could, uh, uh, one could uh, take half of this range by ser duality. 
Okay. Would be it would be sufficient to compute the Clifford index for for half of this range. By shared duality, you get the other half. But sometimes it's more useful in the upper half, and sometimes it's more useful to work in the lower half. So uh, it's better to do it like this. Okay. So what was the, uh, this is the then first conjecture is if gamma one plus two lesser or equal to mu of e less or equal to 2g minus 4, then we get h0 of e is less or equal to d minus gamma 1 n over 2 plus n. So he uh, tried to uh, give an estimate here of h0 in terms of gamma 1, in terms of the classical Clifford index, right? And uh, in the other range, <coughs> he says that if 1 is less or equal to mu of e, <coughs> less or equal to gamma 1 plus 2, then h0 of e is less or equal than now. I mean, this is in the denominator, strangely enough, but I mean, this uh, works out to be, well, in this range, plus n. Again, in terms of gamma 1, right? These uh, were given in 99. This, uh, Paper in around, or maybe 2001, I don't know, around 2000. Okay. Now, what does it say in terms of, one can express this more, translate this conjecture in terms of our Clifford indices. So, this is the following proposition A, the conjecture implies just that gamma n prime is equal to gamma 1. I'm going to show this in a moment, it's just a translation, right? And the second, it says, if gamma n prime is equal to gamma 1, then conjecture 1 holds. What about conjecture 2? Actually, a remark here. If 1 lesser equal you have you are in this range here, mu of e lesser equal to gamma 1 plus 2, right, then h0 one can show easily that h0 of n is lesser equal to less than 2n. So then uh, e does not contribute to the Clifford index gamma n prime. So uh, I mean we, we cannot say here conjecture too old because it doesn't doesn't contribute. So then E does not contribute to gamma n prime. Right? And this means, I mean, altogether, I mean, the conjecture should be, maybe, I mean, we, uh, we would say the conjecture should be, so we make the conjecture should be gamma n prime equal to gamma n. We are far from, from uh, proving this. We can prove this actually for, so can prove this, prove this for gamma 1 lesser equal to 2. So for these curves up to here. Right, but in general we don't know, and we have some and and of moreover, the gamma gamma n is another is a different invariant, a finer invariant. We have some uh, also some uh, <coughs> comparison theorems between gamma n and gamma n prime. This is what I'm going to explain tomorrow. I mean our results tomorrow. Okay, let me first. <coughs> show you how this is proven. Here. First, uh, A, maybe, because it's just a, a translation. So, proof of 1. Proof of A. It's very easy, actually. Proof of A. Maybe I can do this here. So, assume conjecture holds. And E contributes to gamma n prime. 
This means that uh, H0 of E is greater or equal to <coughs> 2n, to and uh, the slope is less than equal to g minus 1. Okay. What do we have to show? Well, one of the uh, trivial, uh, of the easy, easy elementary properties, which I omitted here, maybe I should not omit some elementary property, one of them I write down, says that if P divides N, then we have gamma N lesser equal to gamma P. Well, this is obvious because we are semi-stable bundles and we take one, <coughs> one vector bundle of rank P, and if it divides, we can take uh, N divided by P copies of this, we get a semi-stable bundle of the same bundle, and this uh, this gives you then uh, then this gives you inequality and the same works for gamma n lesser equal to gamma n prime. This is obvious anyway because here we take the minimum over less uh, vector bundles. So uh, here we take the minimum over less vector bundles. So the minimum is, is is lesser equal to and then this is lesser equal to gamma p prime. So by the same reason, right? So gamma one is lesser equal to gamma n prime for any. So we have always have trivially, by trivial reasons, gamma n prime lesser equal to gamma 1. So we have only to show, to show that gamma n prime is greater equal to gamma 1. Okay? So in other words, I have to show exists an E semi-stable, semi-stable vector bundle E, such that gamma of E is greater or equal to gamma 1, right? No, sorry, not exist. For all E, which is the, who contribute, <coughs> for all E who contribute to, which contribute to the Clifford index, we have to show this, right? Okay, so this is what we have to show. Because if we, we show this for all E which contribute, then then this is then the minimum over all these is going to equal to gamma one, gamma uh, one. Okay. Maybe I should write it better. For all E semi-stable, which contribute, <coughs> to gamma n prime, we have gamma of E is greater or equal to 2n. Uh, sorry, is greater or equal to gamma 1. Okay, now it's okay, right? Then also the minimum is greater or equal to gamma 1. This we have to show. So, uh, first case, if mu of e is greater or equal to gamma 1 plus 2, so we are in this case here of the conjecture, greater or equal to gamma 1 plus 2 then we can use this inequality because we assume the conjecture, okay? Yes? So then, then we just compute. Gamma of E is equal to mu of E. Well, I wrote, did not write down the maybe I should write down the, as mu of E minus 2 times H0 of E over N plus 2. And this was the definition of gamma of E. I wrote it down in terms of D. 1 over N, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I erased it already. Maybe I should write it down again. <coughs> gamma of D, D, 1 over N times D minus 2 times H0 of D minus N. That's how I wrote it down, but this is of course mu of D, D over N minus 2 times H0 of D divided by n, okay, minus 1, it's the same. Okay, then we have this here, this is a definition, and then this, yeah, then I use this inequality here, <coughs> use this inequality here, we get greater equal to, because we have a minus sign here, greater or equal to d over n, which is the slope, minus 2 times h0 of n, now I use this inequality there, we have d minus gamma 1n divided by n, uh, divided by 2 plus n. This is the inequality here, right? 
and then this divided by n plus 2. And if you work this out, this is gamma 1, right? Everything cancels, okay? The same proof works in the other for the other inequality. You just use this and it works out and comes out to be gamma 1, okay? So this is just a translation of the conjecture. Right. Okay, so now before the proofs, what is our main tool? Our main tool is something for theory of line bundles. And this I would like to explain in detail. So our main tool is the gonality sequence. Okay, I have to explain what it is. Uh, so for and then next time, uh, uh, tomorrow, I will uh, explain how we use the gonality sequence to prove our results. So now, uh, not anymore on vector bundles, but now on line bundles, I will only explain the uh, gonality sequence in detail. So for C and R, any positive integer, one defines dr, an invariant, is the minimum over all line bundles, degree of L, L in peak C, so a line bundle, right, and H0 of L greater or equal to N plus 1. So what is this? This is an invariant of the curve, right? So, so dr1 is just the minimum of all degrees such that h0 of L is greater or equal to 2. This is just the gonality, right? The minimum degree of a rational map of the curve to P1, right? This is a gonality of C. What is D2? The minimum degree of all L such that uh, h0 of L is greater or equal to 3. This is just the minimum degree of a rational map of C into P2, okay? So let me write it down. This is the minimum degree <laughs> for a non-degenerate rational map C into P2. And what is D3? Well, the same, D3 the minimal degree of a rational map into P3, non-degenerate rational map into P3, etc., etc. And then, yeah, well, then two definitions, then I don't need this at the moment. I don't need this at the moment. We say that L computes dr if and only if the degree of L is equal to dr, this number, right? And h0 of L is greater than to r plus 1, right? Of course, there may be several line bundles which compute the Clifford index, and uh, well, then uh, next, the sequence d1, d2, d3 <coughs> is called the gonality sequence of curve C. Let me give some elementary properties. Excuse me? Yeah? So you say what, n is r? Oh yes, sorry, n is r. Sorry, yeah, I mean, this is one of my... Yeah, of course. <coughs> uh, I couldn't understand, but I mean, this was hopefully obvious. <laughs> okay. So let me give some elementary properties. Of this sequence. So dr is less than dr plus 1. Almost by definition, right? for all r. <coughs> Almost by definition. You have to think a little bit about it, but 
class is clear. And the second is also clear. If L computes dr, then a zero of L is actually equal to r plus one, right? Because if it would be bigger, it would compute already dr plus one, and dr plus one is bigger than dr. I mean, this is. Uh, Yes, and moreover, L is generated by its global sections. If it would not be, you would, co uh, would co could omit the base point and would, would get a line bundle uh, of smaller degree, and I mean, then dr would be smaller. Okay? So, and L is generated, I say, by its global sections. Okay? These are the very elementary. Then there are some more which are not so elementary, actually, but dr plus 1 is lesser equal to dr plus ds for all r and s greater or equal to 1. Okay? This is, uh, well, you take just tensor s, uh, L, say l and n, then you take l tensor n and then you apply a lemma which is called uh, Hopf lemma for, uh, right, which uh, this gives you exactly this. So this is Hopf's lemma. And then there is a difficult one. This is the following. If dr plus ds is equal to dr plus s, then dn is equal to n d1 <coughs> for all n lesser equal to r plus s. r plus s. This is not so easy, but this is a general theorem of Eisenbach on line bundles on all arbitrary abelian varieties, uh, arbitrary uh, varieties. This works for arbitrary abelian varieties. The proof is not easy, actually, and for in the curved case, Martens and Coppins gave after gave a different proof, which is slightly easier, but also not easy. I mean, this is a difficult property, so it's due to Eisenbach. Okay, and then we have, of course, uh, the general things, Clifford theorem. gives you that dr is greater or equal to 2r for all r lesser or equal to g minus 1. And actually dg minus 1 is equal to g minus 2. This is Clifford's theorem, translation of Clifford's theorem. And then, of course, you can also take riemann Bloch. This gives you that dr is equal to r plus g for all r greater or equal to g. So for all r greater or equal to g, you know the invariant dr. It's only interesting for small uh, r. So by, by people, people of uh, working on uh, linear system on curves only define the, only the, 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 the uh, gonality sequence in this range between 0, uh, between 1 and g minus 1. But uh, we need it also for the others. For us, it's the infinity. But for these, uh, you know already, always uh, the dr for high genus. Huh? Then also Bernoulli says something. <coughs> yeah, sevens. Bernoulli implies that dr is lesser equal to g minus g over n r plus one plus r for all r. This is just a Bernoulli theorem. Uh, translated, as I wrote down, down yesterday. I, I will not give the details, this is elementary, okay? And you have equality with equality for a general curve. So for a general curve, you know the, the numbers, okay? For a general curve. For a general curve, you know the, 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 the uh, uh, gonality sequence. Okay, so let me give some examples. Actually, I will write down everything we know about the gonality sequence, and uh, I would like to make uh, to advertise to study this a little bit more. I mean, the uh, people in linear systems did not uh, mostly were interested. I mean, Martens and Coppens, etc., and Keem were mostly interested in in the. Uh, 
in not in this invariant, but in the invariant take the minimum over all line bundles such that H0 is greater or equal to R plus 1, and the map into PR is birational. So this is much more difficult. Uh, this should be, I know, I'm not sure, but <laughs> it's, it's not easy, but uh, there should be, I mean, I think one should study this further because of its applications uh, to vector bundles, which I will explain tomorrow. Today I will only explain all results I know about it, and maybe some of you are interested to work on this further and compute some or more of these. Uh, I will also say why. I mean, we have not a conjecture, but some, some important things. So, examples. First, if C is hyperliptic, then of course if everything is again easy, then we get dr is equal to 2r <coughs> for r lesser equal to g minus 1. This comes, of course, by the existence of the powers of the hyperliptic bundle. And then from riemann roch we get r plus g for r greater equal to g. So there we know the... Uh, then also in the case where it's trigonal, uh, if C is trigonal, this is comes from Maroney's theory for trigonal curves, which was worked out by Martens and Schreier. So I write down Martens, Schreier, who were not uh, interested in this uh, gonality sequence as it stands here, but just in uh, Brillmutter theory for trigonal curves. They worked it out, and it's a consequence of their theorems that we can uh, one can compute this. Martin Schreier, uh, I forgot the year, but anyway, this is Maroni's theorem classical. Maroni was somebody, I think I'm, I'm not sure, but somebody in the 19th century, an Italian mathematician in the 19th century, uh, beginning of 20th century, I don't know exactly when this was. They worked out Maroni's theory to compute the, to work out the uh, Brillnutter theory for trigonal curves. And then we have that dr is equal to, one can write down explicitly, 3R, if R is lesser or equal to G minus 1 over 3, then the next is R plus G minus 1 minus G minus R minus 1 over 2. This is for G minus 1 over 3, less or equal to less than R, <coughs> less or equal to G minus 1. And then we are in the riemann roch range, so we get R plus G for R greater than G. So here one can com explicitly compute this, right? And then there's, I think there's only one paper by Sanja Kim on this uh, gonality sequence, she computed that uh, if C is general, K gonal, and K greater than equal to 4, then we have dr is equal to K times r for 1 lesser equal to r lesser equal to 1 over K minus 2 g minus 4 over 2, right? <coughs> using this, mainly using this fact, I mean, uh, one can, uh, and using a result of Coppens, Riemann-Roch, and Serre duality, one can work out for a general, general means that it's not, I mean, factorizes and uh, etc. One can work out at least for k equal to 4, so from this, mainly, and uh, another result of Coppens, one can compute that if is C is general orthogonal, one can complete this. Okay, then dr dr is equal to four r, so similar to here, four r is for for r lesser equal to g minus 1 over 4, over 2, so over 4, okay, <coughs> and then r plus g minus 1 minus 
g minus r minus 1 over 3 for uh, g minus 1 over 4 less than r less or equal to g minus 1. And then we are in the Clifford range, in the riemann roch range, r plus g if r is greater than equal to g. But it seems nice like that, but except there's an exception. Except when I write it down here, so it's more complicated even. Except when g is congruent 0 mod 4, 0 mod 4, in which case d g over 4 is equal to g minus 1, which is different from this number, right? So at least we have a complete result, and it turns seems that it's getting more complicated, right? <coughs> so this is this result. And then one knows uh, also well, there is a classical theorem by Max Noether. So Noether's theorem. Noether's theorem. says the following, C. Now, Noether theorem is, works out the uh, gonality sequence for a plane curve, smooth plane curve. C is smooth plane curve of degree, and we call it the degree delta because D was came up for the, the degree of the line by rule. So, well, here, uh, delta is, here, is, is the line by rule, but anyway, for uh, D we used already for vector bundles. So of degree delta, I'd say. Then dr is equal to, <coughs> oh, I say in a moment what alpha is. Alpha delta minus beta for if uh, r is less than g, and g for smooth plane curves is delta minus 1, of course, over 2. Okay? And it is, well, for by riemann roch this range if r is greater than equal to g. And then I have to say what are alpha and beta? Where? Alpha and beta are the unique integers, unique integers such that, such that r is equal to alpha times alpha plus 3 over 2 minus beta with, with alpha greater or equal to 1 and 0 lesser or equal to beta lesser or equal to alpha. Right? This seems at first sight. I'm, I don't know whether you know why are there unique integers with these properties. This is already, I mean, sort of strange. Why are they unique integers? Well, because the reason for this, I mean, for the reason for the fact that there are unique integers like this is the following trivial equality. Alpha times alpha plus 3 over 2 minus alpha plus 1 is equal to alpha minus 1 times alpha plus 2 over 2, if you work this out, right? And then, if you know this, there are unique integers like that. Right? It's similar to the, you know, uh, what's it called? Uh, similar to Euclidean algorithm. Right. And this is, you have this here, right? This is just computed. So this is the reason for it. I, I'm not going to prove this. There are modern proofs of this by, by Chiliberto and by, uh, by Hachon. So this is uh, stated by Luther and also proved by him, but I mean, uh, not with the modern proofs. 
in, in the proof, proofs of that time. <coughs> okay, so what are the, the what are the numbers? Let me write down some numbers. <coughs> Let's see where we are going here. The first numbers of the sequence. So delta one, d one, ah yeah, that's why we d one or uh, we couldn't. D one is delta minus one. D two is delta. If you work this out, right? D three is two delta minus two. D four is two delta minus one. Five is two delta, etc. I mean, you can work it out. It's not difficult, etc. Right? And then, in particular. One, we have d2 over 2. What is this? d2 over 2 is delta over 2. And uh, d3 over 3 is equal to 2 delta minus 2 over 2. And it turns out that this is less than this. Right? d, uh, sorry, over 3 here. Okay? Less than this, because, for example, for delta equal to 5, we have that 5 over 2 is less than 8 over 3, right? In general, actually, it turns out, if you look at all these numbers which we have here, I mean, all of them, not only of Noether's theorem, all of them, then mostly we have dr over r is greater or equal to dr plus 1 over r plus 1. And this is the only exception we found. I don't know whether this is the only exception at all, but at least, mostly one has this inequality. And this is what we use, uh, will, I, I will use tomorrow in the proofs. And my question is, of course, question, and maybe some of you might be interested into computing some more of these, uh, <coughs> some more of these uh, integers dr, I mean for non-special uh, orthogonal curves, or double elliptic or something like that. I mean Maybe even among those numbers here, which are there, they are already, we just didn't find them. So, uh, but it would be interesting. And tomorrow I will explain how we use this, right? How we use this and to prove our results. To prove, to prove the results we have on vector bundles. This is a, this gonality sequence is completely only for line bundles, but we use them for vector bundles. I will explain how and explain the results we have, some of the results we have. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.